every laugh, every smile, every hug, every kiss, every touch, every person in my life that I care about and love. But wait, maybe I'm getting too emotional. That's exactly what they say you ain't supposed to do. Suppress your feelings, never talk about your pain. Can't appreciate the sun without acknowledging it rains, right? That's right. So this a moment of clarity. And make sure you always protect your energy. You stay focused and your life gon' be lit. You are now rocking with Celeste, the therapist. Let's go. Hey, hi. Hi, beautiful people. So if you're watching me on the replay, thank you so much for watching me. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, my name is Celeste. I'm a therapist from Boston. And my goal in coming on, hey, Missy, is to just help you kind of shift the way you think. Uh, I've been able to do that by talking to people that are doing things to empower other people. Uh, and I've been actually doing this since 2018. But I've been actually doing this on video for the last four weeks. <laughs> and I finally got into a little groove. <laughs> so that's been really good. Uh, and I always have amazing people uh, that agree to come on my show. So I'm beyond uh, grateful and thank you. Thankful for like all of the support from everyone. Uh, so if you want to follow my podcast, so if you don't know, like the guest that comes on, uh, that ends up turning into a podcast. If you want to follow my podcast, um, you can do it on all streaming platforms. And you can do that right here. This is what it looks like, Celeste Therapist Podcast. Um, and I'm currently streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope. Hey, Andre. Hey, Maurice. Hey, Gary. How are you guys doing? Um, so I'm streaming on three different platforms. And um, one thing I want to put up really quick before I bring on my special guest, Miss Joy, is uh, this text crisis line. So uh, there's this crisis text line, 741741. Uh, if you find yourself struggling and need immediate support, like a crisis counselor where you feel like, um, you know, I just need somebody to talk to, uh, it's a great line for you to utilize. It's free. Um, so I think it's important. Also, because I have people that listen to me from around the world and I don't really know about specific resources for different places, there's this other organization I found, a nonprofit, Hope For Today. It's a nonprofit movement um, that was started by um, someone who had lost nine people in, during separate times, but um, nine people to suicide. Uh, so on this website, you can actually put in your uh, country code or your zip code in your country, and it brings up some mental health uh places for that country so um pretty cool site uh free to use um i think it's important um for us to be able to find resources um when we find ourselves struggling so my special guest uh is joy randall who is a friend to the show she's been here before she was here in season two and shared her story i am going to welcome her to the stage Hello, Miss. Hi. I'm putting my uh, speakers down for a quick second. Can you please uh, introduce yourself to the people? My name is Joy Michelle Randall. I am a beauty expert, and I like to say a conversation starter. Um, here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I'm in North Carolina. I'm between Charlotte and this really small town called Henderson. <laughs> okay, so you're in North Carolina. Yeah. How yeah. is the lockdown or how is it going over there in quarantine in North Carolina? So, again, I'm in a very rural part um, where I take care of my dad. And then, hi, hi, Marie. Um, in Charlotte. So it's like, again, like really, really rural and small. So it took a long time for things to get here and feel any different. Okay, okay, okay. The people here, I mean, they still walk around with no mask on, like... Okay, like so nothing. it's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely can feel the difference, you know, where it's a lot more populated. Um, things are just shut down. So it just, it took a, a really long time for things to kind of get out here towards the country, but... Okay. And so um, for people that are new to the podcast, Joy was on season two. Uh it's a place you can uh, you can re-listen to her story, but uh, she kind of stopped everything that she did to go back to North Carolina to take care of her dad um, with some, he has some health challenges. Uh, so she's been doing that, rerouted her life. 
Uh, and so it was a very interesting, powerful story where she worked on just kind of accepting like this is my new norm. Um, and you've been doing that for how long? It is going on two years. Two years. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. I'm grateful. I'm always grateful to people that come on. And it was very transparent. She also talked about um, losing her brother to suicide. Um, so it was a really powerful story. We actually recorded the episode on her brother's birthday, yeah. um, which was very powerful. Uh, so she is somebody who um, really believes in the power of um, mental health and um, being able to talk and understand. Uh, so with everything going on, because one of the things about Joy, she has a store called JustJoy.store. Uh, and, and, and in this store, I've purchased things from it, but it's all about self-care. When you think about self-care, like what words come to your mind when you think about self-care? Necessary, <laughs> essential, not optional. You know, like it's something that needs to be a practice. And mm -hmm. I think that you have to, even in the smallest ways, you know, just do something daily um, for yourself, you know. And that's why, because a lot of people don't, they may not choose to invest in themselves in a certain type of way, you know, like they don't go to spas or do, do the extravagant things. And so I'm like, well, even if it's just people have to lotion up. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. on a daily basis, you take a shower, you know, you do something small. And even if that's your favorite fragrance, you know, it's it's one small thing you can do every mm -hmm. day and it will get you in the habit of doing something for yourself daily. So how important do you think? Because I love the fact that you said, like, it doesn't have to be nothing extravagant. In fact, people can't do anything extravagant, even if that was something that they have done in the past. So they have to kind of reframe what they are looking at as their way of self-care. Uh, how, how important in your opinion is it for people to make sure that they put self-care on the forefront of their brains, especially during this time? I don't, this might sound dramatic, but I don't think people are really living, <laughs> you know, if you, if you don't like it's, it's essential. It's not optional. I think especially um, I have a real passion for black women, of course, because mm -hmm. you know, they look like me. And I think that just historically, we've been so conditioned to put ourselves on the back burner. Put the kids first, you know, do this for your man. Like it needs to be ingrained that you have to do something for yourself daily. Like it's it's essential to. Mm -hmm your wellness. I always mm -hmm. say what the turns the head. So if you're not right, like how, how can you really be caring for others when your cup is so empty? Um, you have to. Like, no, that's good. Yeah. And, and one of the things Joy said is that we're not really living. And so for people to say, but I'm breathing. So what do you mean? Um, there's a huge distinction between living and just surviving. It's something I talk about all the time. Can you explain to people the difference with living for people that may not really, because sometimes, you know, we go through life and we've seen our parents do it this way and, and our caregivers do it this way. So we don't even recognize that we, all we do is survive. Tell people about the difference. Um, I'll, I'll give a, an example. You know, when I first started off doing my self-care business, you know, with the products, I would ask people things like, oh, well, what's your favorite fragrance? And they, I don't know. You know, I don't know. It's like people had not even taken any time to figure out what they like just or they care so much about what someone else thinks, you know, about mm -hmm. what they like. And mm -hmm. so, again, just the the sensation of taking in a smell and knowing that you love that, like that's living like it's, mm -hmm. it's different than just, oh, you know. I just choose that because my sister wears it or my mother liked it. You know, like, I think that's just the difference in the two um, that, yeah, you don't just get up and breathe and let your body function, <laughs> you know, like you mm -hmm. have to go out and enjoy life and find ways to enjoy life, especially during this quarantine. Um, yeah. And that's like when people say like smell of smell the roses, you know, that's a saying that people say a lot. And I think a lot of times we literally don't smell the roses. We see them, but we don't recognize how red they are, or how beautiful they are. The sun could be shining and it could feel yeah. just so gloomy inside um, because that we don't like take space to actually look at and, and look at what we're seeing and um, embracing the environment in that way. 
Right. I, I said this a lot in our last conversation that one of my favorite movies is The Color Purple. And you know how she was saying, um, I think that God gets upset when we walk by the color purple and we don't notice it, you know. Like mm-hmm. yeah, that's mm-hmm. beauty. That's that's beauty to me. Mm-hmm. Um and somebody said something such as as looking at yourself in the mirror and saying to yourself that you look good or you look gorgeous is something that, you know, we just don't do. You have to grow to that place. I mean, uh-huh. it takes daily self-care and daily practice, you know, to even get to that point where you're like, you know what? I do look in the mirror and I look cute. Like, <laughs> you know, I like what I see, <laughs> you know, and when you're investing in yourself and putting that kind of time and effort. Yeah. You know, but if, if you're not used to it on a daily basis, it's very easy to say, oh, you know, that doesn't matter or it doesn't matter how I look. Um, you know, I was a makeup artist and I still am, but a makeup artist for over 13 years. And that's kind of how my journey got started, because women would come in and it was like this transformation, you know, like make me look. I wanted people to look like themselves, just flawless. Mm-hmm. You know, but mm-hmm. eventually it gets to the point where I don't want to cover it up for you. I want you to genuinely feel that way from the inside out. Mm-hmm. So how can we start reaching these deeper layers? You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. Tell people about some ways they can start like today. Let's say somebody's listening to this because, you know, I think self-care is essential. I think it's necessary to live. I agree with you 100 um, percent. But I know that sometimes uh, we allow the way that we've always been living to take precedent. Uh, what are some like simple, like give people some concrete steps to to start today in quarantine? We ain't got many options. <laughs> we ain't well, got many options. The question I always ask people is in a perfect world with no restrictions, what would you be doing? Mm-hmm. You know, like to dream. I mean, the one thing that you can do, you're at home, you have the time, the mental space, dream big. And think like, okay, if I had no limitations whatsoever, all the money right here on paper, get a journal, you know, right here on paper, write down what would my life look like. Mm -hmm. And there was a time too when I wrote down what does my ultimate 24 hours look like in a dream world? You know, Mm -hmm. when I wake up, what would I be doing? Where would I go? You know, what am I going to eat? You have to really create lifestyle from that emotional space first. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's something simple people can do, you know, um, it's hard because you're immediately all those doubts and things that your mind is trained to do are going to pop up. But remember, this is on paper. I mean, there's no limitations there. So yeah. I think that's a really good start to actually like write down what you envision, because I think when we're trying to plan something, whether we're talking about self care or something else, and it just stays in our head, it kind of goes nowhere. <laughs> It goes nowhere and it kind of sticks there. So if you're like listening to this and you feel like, you know what, you're right. I don't take time to smell the roses. When I take a shower, it's not really intentional. I'm just kind of going in and going out. I'm not like really taking space to breathe. Um, Writing down what your 24 hours would look like and start making space to be intentional about creating small increments to create that space for self-care. I say like 15 minutes is something um, that we can do. Um, yeah. and, and it's cause it's too easy to be like, uh, I don't have time. Right. Yeah. And, um, saying I don't have time, um, is something we don't do when we don't feel like going to work, we go to work because we know how to survive. Right. But the process of living, like, let me wake up 15 minutes before my kids wake up or my family wakes up. Let me take space to meditate. Let me take space to like, write down how I feel. Um, those are things that are free, right? You don't have to pay for self-care. It's not about the spa, um, yeah. but it is something that requires your body being in a different space it's not used to. And, and find a way to implant things that you love slowly into those spaces. It's like yeah. okay, the shower it's not about spending a lot of money, but it should be a fragrance that you really, really enjoy. I mean, mm-hmm. turn you have to shower daily, <laughs> at least every other day, <laughs> you know, and um, create that space. That 15 minutes is your time. I mm-hmm. mean, make it the best shower that you can. You can put the eucalyptus leaves in there, even if you have to take them out afterwards, you know, so nobody touches them. You know, make that a sacred space. Even if you're eating dinner, like, make it 
something pretty on it. Make get some nice china, you know, like make it enjoyable for yourself. And you just mentioned, um, so Joy just mentioned like the fragrance and stuff. Cause tell people how essential it is, like smell, how smell can be a part of the process. Cause I don't think people when I you sent me the body scrub and the mint spray, and um there's something that about that mint spray that just kind of opens up my like system where yeah. I just feel a breath of fresh air. I can't explain it, but I know it feels good on the inside part. <laughs> Can well, you tell people oil, about this stuff? <laughs> I use all natural. Um, that's my preference, you know. And essential oils all have emotional connections to them too. Um, so like lavender, lemongrass, um, those are all scents that are calming. Um, so yeah, it makes, it makes a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. Um, I like stuff like rose, you know, that's very feminine. Sometimes women are really trying to reconnect to that. Um, sandalwood. I use a lot of fragrances too that are, um, like ancients, you know, like from Egypt, like myrrh and frankincense and things like that. So, um, you know, essential oils work on our emotions too. Uh, what they call the parasympathetic nervous system. And so just that rubbing it into your skin, you know, make that kind of ritualistic. That's what I love about it. Um, Good. And they're not so heavy that it's overbearing and that that's all that you smell. Um, right. I like for people to for it to actually mix with their natural chemistry mm -hmm. and fragrances that they will love, you know, and actually spray on so it doesn't compete with that. Mm -hmm. And somebody on here, Missy, she um, said, I eat alone now and set the table and light candles. It helps to enjoy eating alone. And I think the candles, too. I'm a big candle person just smelling it. I don't know. It just puts a smile on my face. It's the, it's the little things, really, when you think about it. If we can, like, work on appreciating and, and, and um, implementing the little things, it'll just make the day go by differently. I would say, too, like, especially for single women, you know, like, cook for yourself like you would cook for a man or cook for anyone that's coming over to your house. I think it doesn't always have to be an excuse that people are coming over for you to do something special. I cook myself crab legs, you know, steak. Like I will sit right here and eat it by myself and make it so delicious and amazing. But you you should do those things for yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just wait until there are other people there. Um, learn to enjoy it. Learn to enjoy things alone. I think that's that's important. And it's an act of self-love. And a lot of times, you know, my listeners who talk about like, you know, how do I, how do I uh, love myself, right? How does that work? And everything that Joy's talking about now is an act of self-love. And I'll tell you now, if you're thinking and you're listening to this and you're going to try to do this, initially, it may not feel the way we're describing it, right? Because you're introducing a foreign concept to your body. And so what happens when we introduce a foreign concept to our body? It tries to reject it. So you just have to like make it an intentional process. And over time, um, your mind, I say your mind and body will start to fall in line with the environment that you're trying to create for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was saying I have a little conversation that I do on Tuesday mornings on my beauty influencer page. And I was saying this morning how you have to literally slow down and feel your feelings, you know, because it is natural for you to kind of bucket or um, go into whatever habits, coping mechanisms that you have, you know, I don't want that or that don't even, I don't like that. I don't like the way it smells, you know, just take your time and actually feel the emotions and it's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel angry. You're going to feel uh, sad or, you know, just uncomfortable in general, but like yesterday, I woke up feeling like, you know, a little crazy. You know, the little the home nurse wasn't acting right. And <laughs> it felt like everybody was doing things to get on my nerves. But I literally took the whole day to be quiet, not just respond to everything and just get to the root of how I was feeling. And it's a lot taking care of somebody else. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot. It's a lot feeling like you don't have help you know and those emotions are are real they're natural but then you have something in place you know so that okay this is how i'm feeling so let me do my little nighttime ritual you know let me get my lavender butter out let me do these things and then get a good nice rest and then tomorrow i'll feel a lot better 
No, that's good. So if you, I just want to kind of recap what Joy just said. Um, it is very hard. Yeah, Missy. I wanted to recap what Joy said. So basically she was feeling like she wasn't herself, feeling a little crazy. A lot of things weren't going right. And I think when we start to feel a certain way, it's easy for our brain to point out the things that aren't going right. You know, like you, you start to not miss out on the things that are going right because not everything feels like it's a domino effect. And you're yeah. like, dang. So things aren't going right. She took space to woosa, take some deep breaths, and figure out, what, <laughs> figure out what was going on. But she has some systems that are already in place, so it was easier to tap into that system to help yourself kind of reset. Yes. Absolutely. And it doesn't feel good to actually like be in those feelings. I think sometimes the way we alleviate that feeling is that we start to be impulsive make impulsive decisions, lash out. And, and I will tell you, I was not always that way. <laughs> I mean, no, taking, Joy, you wasn't, <laughs> you wasn't born this way. It's taken years to get to a place where there wasn't a substance that I grabbed or a man that I grabbed, or even now just social media, like, I took a break for over the holidays, like the holidays are a huge trigger for me. And I took a break from social media from like for like maybe three months. And that doesn't mean I didn't get on there at all because right. you know, this is our life. This is where we're at. Mm -hmm. But I I would wake up in the morning and I chose to do audio books, you know, instead of just jumping online because you find that everybody else's opinions, you know. Like you have to take the time too to be silent enough to make sure these are your feelings and not just things that you're reading, not think not even talking about your problems to people who may even be family members or friends they mean you well you know but they're gonna predict how they feel and you don't know where they are in their journey and not to even judge their journey at all just making yeah. sure okay i'm the one who's pissed off today you know <laughs> it is what it is <laughs> and then be able to move on no no, that's good because a lot of times we, we end up, um, we be in our feelings or we be pissed off or something happens because we take it in everybody else's stuff, especially women. We're notorious for helping and being there. And then we fly off at the handles, not yeah. understanding what's going on. <laughs> and I so people would call my friend, you know, all day long, you're talking, talking, talking about this problem. You're talking about this problem and you're really reliving it. All day, all day, all day, all day. And then you wonder why you can't feel better, you know? Like, it's take a so shower. Look, take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get into that space. Break and, it up. And sometimes you can have, there may be somebody that is rational and more solution oriented. So it's not like everybody's going to be that way. But a lot of times, you know, if it's your family or friend, they're going to kind of lean on, you know, where you're at and kind of be on your side, which is makes sense. Right. But you really need sometimes to like step away from just kind of talking about it and just kind of like sitting with it. And um, and a lot of us don't like sitting with our stuff. Um, and, and now we're forced to sit with our stuff. And so I say, like, now that we're kind of forced to kind of sit in our stuff, it's important to really try to like work through it. Um, and not distract ourselves so much um, with like anything. Anything can become a habit. There's nothing wrong with some of the things that we do, but when it becomes excessive or when it's something that we feel guilty about or, you know, or it's, it's, it's complicating our lives, that's when it's the problem. Like food can be an addiction, right? There's nothing wrong with food, but we have to really be mindful on what we're utilizing to um, distract ourselves because, um, the more we do it, the more um, it, it becomes harder to let go of. I'm huge on balance mm -hmm. versus anything in excess. You know, um, I have something on my page. It's like eat healthy-ish, you know, healthy -ish. <laughs> You know, I'm going to have my cakes. I'm going to have my cookie, you know, because I enjoy it. Yep, <laughs> like, yep. Yeah, that makes me feel alive. Like. You know, now do I need 15 of them? Do I need them every single day? No. Tomorrow I'm going to balance that out with something a little healthier. You know, maybe do a little fasting. Maybe mm -hmm. you have to balance things out. Um, so even if you find yourself repeating certain mistakes or 
It's like, it's okay. You know, like balance it out with something better. Yeah. Are you going to make a better decision every single time? I always say that. No, that's good. Like if I, I might have 15 cookies one day, but I got to learn how to let, let that go and move on and um, be okay. I no cookies. <laughs> <laughs> And we're human. I, I think a lot of times, you know, we forget that we're human and we have emotions. We're not robots. We're going to feel a certain way. And I think um, the most valuable thing that I've learned is that like life is hard. And um, I feel like I'm more equipped to deal with the hard moments than I was in the past. Just like Joy just said, like she wasn't always like this. I wasn't always like this. Y'all, <laughs> y'all can tell I got a little hood in me, you know? <laughs> I wasn't always like this, like at all. <laughs> but like, I got thirty percent now, thirty percent ratchet. It is in there. Don't get the twisted. It, 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 it didn't go nowhere, it, you know. <laughs> but it's not leading the way. It's not leading the charge. Right, right. But <laughs> if necessary, you know, we will pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, I think you know. The, I think the moral of this is to. Um, the self-care piece to kind of make it um, like uh, the same way you set your alarm to go to work. Well, when we went to work, but um, the same way you would set your alarm to get up and go to work, think about like, what can I set or how can I be intentional about starting this process to take care of myself? Because um, people will say like, oh, you're doing a lot or how do you do everything? And I really have peace like I, I, li I literally walk in peace and it's because I literally make self-care essential part of my life. And it's not something I pay for. Um, it's something that I um, implement in my schedule where even if it's like, oh, give me a second, kids. Y'all know I got four kids or um, I'm going to go for a walk by myself. Like those little things, it's the little things that actually give me joy and peace. Yeah. Um, and I, I, and I, you know, it's not something like my community, um, it, it, you know, we're not, I wasn't taught this way. And so it's kind of like my mission to like help people understand that, you know, you can do it um, right outside your home or right inside your home. Right. Um, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take some work but on any other side of all that. There's a lot of peace that's kind of waiting for you. Look, deep breath. <laughs> I felt that. I was felt that a word or was that no, a word? That is a word. That is a word. Because I think, you know, yeah, peace is so under underrated. You know, it's like just personal peace in general. I personally, you know, have felt like Corona <laughs> this time has been a blessing, you know, to uh, to everybody because it's really given us some time to slow down. Um, most people who who are kind of in the rat race and every day of you know work kids and you know and you are forced you know to to slow down and actually feel some things deal with some things. Um, I'm a person who I'm pretty introspective naturally. I try to you know sort through my my own stuff. That's just the way I am, you know. But I find that most people. And there's no judgment whatsoever, but most people don't have the time. They don't have the time to sit and think about, you know, well, how did that make me feel today? <laughs> or, um, you know, just what's going on to process anything. And, you know, I don't want to get too deep with it, but even when we start getting into classism, you know, like we have to understand again as black people in america that this is systemic you know we are not far removed from slavery i said that in the last um conversation that we had as well and you know even what we were saying last week when they were saying that this this epidemic is really hitting um the black community and i think that breaks down into the classism as well because we don't have the health care we don't have um, access to the same type of services. And again, so if people are just trying to make money and just trying to live and just trying to eat. They don't mm -hmm. have the room and the space to think about how is this really affecting me? What, what's going on within myself? And those emotions do filter into your, your body and your yeah. organs, you know, yeah. like my father has diabetes. I mean, this, and to this day, this man will eat. That's what he does. I mean, if there's something going on, he is going to 
eat those problems, you mm-hmm. know? And mm-hmm. so it takes time, you know, um, it, to just have the peace in the mental room to even deal with your emotions. I think that's a blessing to have that kind of time. And now, I mean, we get checks, we know we, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. But use this time effectively, you know, so that we can move forward. And uh, I think I'm, I'm grateful for you for, for pointing that out. Cause I think that's something that I don't say enough of um, about, cause even though I talk a lot about, trying to like take just 15 minutes because I realize that's all we have sometimes is 15 minutes. Um, I think it's helpful for people to understand the, the um, systemicness of it or the, the reason or like making the connections as to why like we haven't been able to do that um, so that we can make it available for us. So we could say, you know, I'm going to take this 15 minutes in the morning because I realized like the way that society was set up for me, like it was set up for us to fail. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the system. The structure itself is yes. built. Yes. And it's, it's something that I no longer choose to get upset about. It doesn't make me angry. It is a thing of, okay, I have to take care of myself. Yes. I don't hand that responsibility to my government. I don't hand it to the other people around me. It's yeah. my job. Take yeah, care. I have to prioritize myself. So yeah. I can manage them for something they don't know how to do and never planned on doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly the way I think about it is that like I get pit- I'm pissed off that it's like that. And that's why when I always tell talk about myself and say I always I wasn't like this because I want people to know like we can work on um, living a life of peace even though it's not the way the system was set up for us at times we can like actually work on it and it's gonna take time it's not I think sometimes when people arrive or get to a certain place they forget where they were and so they don't talk about it in the way where where people can understand like it's this is like simple basic stuff like. How you talked about like just taking a shower that's as basic as it go as it gets and um and i think there's little things that we can do that we may not have recognized it as something that can help us on our journey and that's why i'm grateful for people like you that come on and kind of give this insight in that side so people can see it all together yeah i mean it's it's also been a wonderful opportunity for us to see how our own communities can come together and help yeah no um, I think there, I'm, I always say life happens. You know, you have to find the beauty. You know, there are a lot of great things that have happened because of this this time, you know, that we've, we've had to step away and really look at the value, you know, of life, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Living, you know, the reality is that death is outside every single day. I mean, it just so yeah. happens that we have something that, you know, it's like, oh, okay. You know, but it's I can get hit by a bus. I mean, you know, we looked at Kobe. You you never know. So again, yeah, take the time to smell the roses because that's I was just not prominent. Not to be morbid, you know. No, you're right. Life. That's that's the reality. Yeah. Yeah. Take the time. Take the time. Take the time to smell it. <laughs> take the time. Put the bladder on it. You know, buy the fragrance. I was going to ask for a, a, a something to leave my guest with to think about, but I like that. Take time to smell the roses. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just necessary. It really it is. And um, it's here to be enjoyed. It's here to be enjoyed. By it you. is. You know. It is. Like Nike said, just do it. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Joy, this was so awesome. I'm grateful for you for coming on and sharing this. Uh, I think that um, when I have people that talk about self-care the way that you talk about it, it kind of helps people kind of rethink it, um, to okay. rethink what it looks like. You know what I mean? Thank you. I mean, I'm here. Sorry for my junkie. This is Joy University. So this is where I make my products. <laughs> And speaking of your products, can you tell people about your website and what they can expect to find on it? Just Joy. I like that name, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you'll find a in this about page. You'll you know definitely hear a little bit of my story, but it's basically just my products um, that I make. They all come from my mind and um, my own little. In- uh, recipes and so you'll find my products there you'll also find some tools I've just added those I became certified in a treatment called gua sha 
last year. What um, is that? It's a facial massage. It's an ancient Asian facial massage. And what it does is it gets to the root of anything that we could possibly be dealing with with our skin, whether that's wrinkles, lines, hyperpigmentation, absolutely anything. Oh, it wow. you and it is a health treatment because we all have is a face map um, and it goes to different areas and organs in our body. The first time I had a gua sha treatment, I literally had an emotional release that night. So we wow. have centers, you know, on our face as well. So it really is a health treatment um, and a beauty treatment at the same time. So there are two and, that I sell. And, um, and what I like about Joy and um, Just Joy, the store, um, is that everything is natural. And growing up in America, uh, I feel like only thing that's pushed on us, the propaganda, is... Um, pharmaceutical meds and like therapy, right? Obviously, I don't think there's anything wrong with therapy. I'm a therapist, but I feel like those are the only two modalities that are um, pushed on us. And so like, you know, I would challenge you, like if you are struggling and you you have questions, like if you're talking to your doctor and you have questions, um, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to do your own research. Um, doctors are practicing doctors, right? Um, and there's more than one way to heal. Like, I can't stress that Ooh. enough. And that's why I have people like Joy and everybody else that comes on is because I really want people to know, like, you may not have the insurance, you, you're, you may not have that doctor, you know, but that's not the only way that you can work on your healing process. So I'm grateful for people like you um, that kind of spread this knowledge about the different ways that we can work on so and it's inclusive. I have a therapist. <laughs> I mean, yes. I have a therapist every other, you know, telehealth every other week. So, you know, it is in combination with, you know, don't feel like you have to choose one or the other. Yeah. All these in are fact, two. you need more than one. I, you know, I, I think therapy is just one and the work happens when you leave therapy. Like I'm big on that part. And so just kind of thinking about it in a holistic way uh, is going to be important um, during this process, right? Self-care is one thing. Therapy could be another thing. You know what I mean? Like there's so many different ways. It's not linear. Like healing, no. our healing journey is not linear. Um, it's going to take different paths, but you're going to start to figure out like what works for me because what works for joy works for joy. What works yeah. for Celeste works for Celeste. It's not a one size fits all. Yep. Absolutely. I totally agree. Thank totally you. Agree. <laughs> Thank you so much, beautiful. I'm so grateful Woo! to you for coming on. Uh, you guys can follow Joy on social media um, and you can visit her store. Um, and yeah, this is your second time. So you are, um, what is it, a resident now? Is that what they say? <laughs> A veteran, maybe? Yeah, this is her <laughs> second time on the show. You can well, hear. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yes. I, you I have always loved what you do. Um, I, every day I'm like, this girl is busy. She is getting going. Like, this is so dope. So keep doing what you're doing, girl. Thank you. Thank you. And I, me and Joy, she started following me even before the podcast. I don't remember how we started connecting, I but sticky notes. I can't remember her name, but she's another therapist and I was following her and she, I remember her tagging you and I was like, oh, okay, a black therapist? Like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we've been following each other forever. So I've watched her grow. She's watched me grow and um, it's been beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We're going to keep supporting each other. I like to say, yes. let's keep each other lifted. Keep yes, we will. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, yeah, she's so amazing. I'm so grateful to her for um, coming on and sharing. Um, definitely like her her um, her story on uh, Joy Randall. You can catch her um, on last season uh, where it was a little different conversation where we talked about her life and um, some of the struggles um, that she's had. Um, and so like today to like hear her talking and then we actually left off at us kind of talking about just joy and self care. So it's nice that we kind of picked it back up where, um, where we left off. Um, and so that was, um, that was awesome. So, um, she is definitely overcoming. Yes. Cause you, you, you see, you, you actually messaged me about her story 
I remember it. Um, so yeah, so thank you guys so much. Y'all know I love y'all um, for rocking out with me. Uh, if you didn't hear, we are um, next month. We'll be at a hundred thousand uh, downloads. Thank you, Missy, for being here. We'll be at a hundred thousand downloads uh, for my podcast. Uh, that's like a huge milestone for me. I um, I started this podcast because I wanted to talk to people that are doing things to empower other people. I wanted to help other people learn how to heal and um, by sharing other people's stories. Um, so, you know, um, to have people actually play the episode, to have people actually share the episode, um, and to have people um, continue to rock out with me has been like, it brings tears to my eyes. I'm just so grateful because my message is being delivered and I get messages all the time about how people are being like blessed and how people are finding hope and how people are being inspired. Um, and it's not because of me, it's because of my guest and, and you guys for always like being here and, um, and, um, and just being around and always being there. So, um, beyond thankful. Uh, if you guys ever want to um, be on the show, um, have a show idea, you guys can message me info at celestetherapist.com. Um, if you want to learn more about me, go to celestetherapist.com. You can also uh, follow me on all social media sites. You can go to Celeste Therapist. Um, if you put in Celeste Therapist, you'll find it. So we'll be back Monday. I mean, no, what's today's Tuesday. We'll be back Wednesday another guest. Uh, we'll be back the rest of the week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you guys are here. Um, and if you missed the episode or you ever want to listen to it on um, podcast, you can do that um, on all streaming platforms. So I love you guys and I will talk to you later. Every laugh, every smile, every hug, every kiss, every touch, every person in my life that I care about and love. But wait, maybe I'm getting too emotional. That's exactly what they say you ain't supposed to do. Suppress your feelings, never talk about your pain. Can't appreciate the sun without acknowledging it rains, right? That's right. So this a moment of clarity. And make sure you always protect your energy. You stay focused and your life gon' be lit. And you are now rocking with Celeste the Therapist. Let's go.